fun. Um, I had so much fun watching Frank Ireland. Um, right. <laughs> first of all, I thought it was really fascinating that usually when you have like kind of, you know, a scrub who's trying to get his girl back, it's because he did like a whole number of things wrong and she's just the perfect person who has her life together and he has to prove himself worthy. Mm -hmm. But that is not necessarily the case here. So can you talk about this really interesting dynamic you have going on? Sure, sure. Um, you know, we really liked um, the idea of Anya, who's Frank's ex, um, just, you know, kind of being a bit of a disaster herself rather than being, you know, sensible uh, and that old trope, we just wanted to forget all that stuff. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's not immediately clear. I, I think when you're watching it, you're kind of, Frank is a disaster and she seems to be moving on and that's fine. But, you know, she starts off by lying, you know, uh, about the boyfriend and about, um, uh, you know, then he meets her the next day and she's pretending like, oh God, I didn't even, uh, you know, me, little old me, I didn't realize that. So she's definitely... Um, playing her own game and I think that was you know uh that's kind of true of all the characters that they're kind of basically as bad as him maybe not imme that's immediately apparent but on some fundamental level yes they're all they're all pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> um, um and I love that this is kind of like a <laughs> family affair how did you and uh Donald like come up with this idea or start the process of writing it y yeah it, it was a, it was a long process we started writing it about uh six years ago 2015 um and we had worked together before we'd done a play together uh i knew he was a very good writer he wrote and directed a couple of short films that i was that i was in so um i wanted to work with him again and, and i just mentioned to him maybe we should do you know something funny uh and he said hold that thought let me bring in michael maloney <laughs> i've done lots of sketches with him we have a relationship going back many years uh so it kind of started from there. Once the three of us got into a room, uh, we kind of got on uh, very well and kind of made each other laugh. And, you know, very slowly kind of Frank came out of that. But uh, it's hard to pinpoint exactly. Mm. Um, but he's definitely um, from some sort of uh, childhood uh reference or something you know we were talking about how myself and Donald are brothers and then Michael and, and Donald are very old friends and I think mm. references are the same so I think Frank kind of came out of that that idea of being a kid not wanting to uh to grow up I think it's something like that oh I love that I mean and obviously the core chemistry between the two of you comes out very easily on screen um mm. but the whole cast really does feel like it's like lived in family environment so did you cast for chemistry with everyone or did you build that once you've already got the cast um yeah i think anyone who came in and, and read um you know sometimes God, we saw so many amazing actors uh but but anytime anyone came in and read and, and just took it seriously those were the ones that made us laugh the most and just connected um the performance to the story because it's a good lesson and it was a lesson I had to just keep telling myself as we were shooting that, you know, these people take their lives very seriously. So it was important for us as actors not to be uh, in on the joke. Because I think once you're in the joke, then it becomes a little bit cringy. So anyone, you know, like Tom Von Lawler is a very serious kind of dramatic actor in Ireland um, and the UK. Uh, but, you know, hearing him, you know, talk about dupes and talk about these ridiculous things, but with like uh, utmost kind of uh, sincerity kind of made us laugh. So I think that principle was something we kind of really wanted to work through all the way through the casting. Oh, that's great. Uh, speaking of dupes, uh, what makes him so loyal to Frank, do you think? I feel like Frank kind of <laughs> drags him along half the time. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think, God, he's like, yeah, for some reason he thinks that Frank's like, the coolest kid, you know, if someone have grown up as the cool kid, is your cool mm. older brother or your cool older cousin or something. And for whatever reason, uh, Doofus thinks that. But I think, kind of like I was saying earlier, I think um, there's a kind of a codependency that they all have mm. uh, with the one-on-one -on -one relationships that they, they all need to move on in some way. And so it's not, Doofus is like self-interested in his own way. He obviously... Uh, I think, you know, and in a way, he's holding Frank back as much as Frank's holding him back. Uh, so there's a convenience 
to their friendship, which may explain why they're still in it, you know. <laughs> I guess I guess that kind of uh, maybe translates itself as well to why uh, Frank is still in his house because his mm. mom maybe is the same kind of uh, dynamic. Can you talk a little bit about Mary and what makes her relationship with Frank so unique? Yeah, um, you know, like lots of people, God, lots of people uh, live at home for much longer you know these days so it's mm-hmm. more it's like the fact that he's doing that it's just that he's no as, as well as been a disaster he just he's no prospects in life mm-hmm. there's no job prospect he's none of that and and mary doesn't really care which we thought was really funny rather than having a kind of a you know there's a very well-worn trope of the irish mother who's very busy and kind of uh you know, it's like almost like Italian mothers. I don't know if it's Catholic or something. It's just these kind of great maternal figures. But Mary's very much the opposite of that. She's very much live and let live. Um, and she definitely loves Frank, but uh, she's not very discerning with him and in terms mm-hmm. of what he needs. <laughs> uh, so we just thought that that would be really funny that they're more mates than anything else. Uh, mm-hmm. And also she likes having him around, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I think, yeah, in order for the story to work, he has to be kind of pushing it and kind of, uh, you know, um, yeah, pushing it too hard, yeah, through mm-hmm. the course of the show, yeah. <laughs> now, um, one thing that I thought was kind of funny, uh, or actually very funny, but <laughs> it was like, they're musicians, right? They're talking about music mm-hmm. a lot, but we very rarely see actual music taking place, even in like, <laughs> even in the musical episode. So I was wondering if that was like purposeful, like how do you guys approach the, they want to be musicians angle? Yeah, yeah, that's funny, I think. Yeah, I, I think I think it developed very naturally because um, Michael, our, our co-writer, is a very talented musician. And actually, Emma Donald had like a character going back years who was like a failed singer-songwriter. He was looking really like Frank, but in terms of the music element. And then when we were talking about, it, you know, I was saying, lads, I can't, I can't even sing bad. You know, I can't even perform badly. You know, so I'm not sure if being, you know, if Frank being a musician is gonna work if we see him play loads they were like well what was if he's not what was if he's just terrible like he's so bad that uh we'll see other people sing his terrible songs that inappropriately are, are you know are inappropriate uh in the show so also there's been so much stuff done on that you know like final mm-hmm. tap and even david brent has a guitar he likes singing songs like the failed musician uh we've seen a lot of so mm-hmm. we kind of just want to take a different tack on that like even in episode two he can't even write anything you know right. and I think that that made him more relatable in the sense that just having a creative block that he can't he has all this energy uh, and drive but he's got no zero talent uh, right. and that's very <laughs> frustrating it was very frustrating for him yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, now finally um what's coming up next for you I know that there's Peaky Blinders final season is there anything you say about mm. that or anything else you're working on um, I'm working on a TV show called uh, Extinction, which is written mm. by a guy called Joe Barton, uh, who wrote a show a couple of years ago called Geary Haji, which did very well. And he's um, developing the new Batman TV show for HBO. Ooh. That's a big deal for him. Uh, mm-hmm. But mean, mean, what, meantime, he's got a, a show out for Sky. So I've been working on that. That should be out later this year or early next year. Oh, very cool. Well, I look right. forward to that and uh, yeah. for everyone seeing Frank Violent. <laughs> Thank right. you so much. Thanks very much. Day. Cheers.